What's up guys? So I'm sitting here waiting on parts, but I figure uh, I got the camera all charged up. I figure we're going to do a, a run through, uh, in depth tour of the diagnostic cart. I got it all cleaned up. You know, I'm standing here cleaning up. I figure what a better time to uh, shoot one for you guys than now while I'm waiting on these parts to show up on this uh, Silverado I'm working on here. But we're going to get into it. Alright guys, so here it is, Snap-on Diagnostic Cart, originally part number ALG345POT, but then what Snap-on does is they convert it and put a TV mount on it, or a monitor mount, it's, I think they drill some extra holes in there as far for the electrical stuff on the top shelf, and they convert it to part number EEWS330POT. Got flat black, flat back trim. Comes with a sticker on there, diagnostic center sticker. But it's got these bumpers on the side. It's a nice little cart. I'm actually, uh, I was actually originally thinking about getting this as a service cart, but I think I'm gonna hold off and get the Epic to match the toolbox. But getting into it, we got the uh, obviously the Toughbook laptop. This one is the uh, I think CF29 model. Use this, uh, I got XP running on this thing, Windows XP. Using this thing a lot less now, I'll probably get ready to update it soon. But you got the 13 inch touchscreen monitor on there. Always sitting on charge. Great laptop, I've had this thing for years. I talked about it in some of my other videos. And then my other main work laptop, this one's running Windows 7. Um, getting close to being pretty much full. I save all my data on there. Like I said, this one's running Windows 7. I want to say this is a 16 inch monitor laptop. So I'll carry this in the cars when I'm, you know, working with the modules or using the laptop for anything like that. Another great one. Got to get this one cleaned out too though. You constantly got to update these computers. And then the cart has, like I said, the, uh, the stand on it. So you can mount the monitor. I got an Acer V276HL monitor here. Pretty nice monitor. I'll turn it on in a second here. But what I did is I ran another power strip. So I got two power strips. I don't know if you guys are picking that up in the back. You got one on this side and one on this side. So I, it could run all the power on this thing. So, and then connected to it, I made some brackets for it, for the speakers, and then got some Logitech speakers on the sides here in case I need to hear sound coming out of the Varus that I use and that's down here this first one these things slide open on slides pretty nice this is the computer setup here got the Varus here Varus edge scanner pretty much it's got the base station you dock it right in there I got the VGA cord hooked to it a couple uh, SD cards for data and all that stuff <clears throat> pretty much just turn it on and then the screen automatically goes on the monitor so you can see, pick it up a little bit uh, better data and then you could just use the mouse to uh, open up the suite or whatever you're doing, go to all data, identifix, check information, all that stuff. And then I got the wireless Logitech mouse and wireless Logitech keyboard to kind of keep all three together. You know, Acer monitor running Windows on the Snap-on Varus and then all Logitech. And then down in here, obviously I got my pocket scanners I still use. I got a quick uh, battery from Ansel, battery tester in here. Another little small pocket scanner, this is the one I probably carry outside, usually carry outside. You got the Varus module here, it's got a nice little pocket for it. And then down in here I got the uh, 
the keys, the old keys for the uh, the old scanners I got. <clears throat> you guys are probably laughing at me, but I probably got every single key you would ever need. Um, use them a lot less, but you know these things don't take up room, guys. That's why I keep them. They cost money, and it's not a whole lot of people looking for these. I'd rather just keep them. You know these things is uh, I got these pretty much one one at a time throughout the years, and I like to keep them. They're pretty much collector's items now. And who's to say I might never need them again? You never know. And you know they're kind of tucked away down in there, so they don't take up any room. But I find myself still using OBD1 every now and again. I mean, I got an old, old Saab right there that I'm working on. So we still work on the old cars around here. But that's pretty much the top one here. And then obviously I got the old snap-on brick keychains. Pretty cool. Got two of those. But that's pretty much the, the top, what I got in the top here. And then I got my little uh, universal VIN decoder for the years. Always tuck that up in there. That's got to get updated too now that they're round robin in the VIN years. So that's the top one. But like I said, guys, it's a five drawer. I want to say this thing is 33 inches wide and about 19 inches deep with that top drawer being the deepest drawer. And then all the rest are pretty much the same. Maybe the bottom one's a little bit smaller, maybe three inch. And then those other three are four inches. So getting into the top drawer, guys, these uh, the locking on these drawers are the slide lock you know they don't start until about here and then you could feel them all the way to the end here so all the front drawers you can't you can't open it when it's closed you can't open it over here you got to grab it here and then open it so not too bad you can kind of see if you're getting that but getting into this top drawer this one I got the uh, I got the Wi-Fi printer here hooked to the Varus. So if I want to print any information for the customer and all that stuff, tech notes or anything like that, um, I got the HP NV4500 here. It works pretty well. Um, you know, hook it up to the internet and it, everything works together. It's also hooked to my phone, the tablet, my scanner, all that stuff, all in one. And then this drawer, I just got staple, a stapler in there, extra ink cartridges. Uh, just things for taking notes, paper for taking notes, scratch paper, a couple extra pens, marker. Got my uh, automotive testing and diagnostic second edition book down here. You haven't read this in a long time, but some decent information in there. Light reading. Got my uh, little clipboard. That way if I, I need to write inside the car or underneath the hood or something like that. And then this thing also copies. I can make copies or anything. Just ran the wire down through there and then back up through here and everything's hooked together in the back. So got the printer in the first drawer. This second drawer, you got all the, all the OBD1 connectors here. A um, lot of them I don't use, but it's good to have them and not need them, then need them and not have them. So some of them I got doubles. Well, I don't think any of the doubles are in here. Um, Mazda, Toyota, they're pretty much the whole set. I got the whole set here that I've actually acquired over the years. Got a couple uh, extra SD cards here. I save the data on some of these uh, cards that I work on. I'll save them onto here, that way I could take them off the Varus. I'm not taking up all the space on the Varus. And then I got the European SD update for the Varus down here. GM, and then if you want to hook up an OBD1, you just hook this up, and then you could use it wireless. You could use these OBD1 connectors wirelessly with the Varus. This is the universal. Got a couple T-pins in here. That's this drawer. Third drawer. You got all my leads for the scope. The BLN connectors, uh, lengtheners and all that stuff. Unions there, all the clips. Got my uh, low amp probe. Part number on that. EETA308A. It's a pretty nice one, I like it. Get you good clean signals. A um, couple ignition things, extra uh, test leads there. It's nice how it's got little pockets for everything. Got the cheapo little uh, circuit tester, and then uh, another little amp probe that you could hook to the multimeter. That's that drawer. This next drawer, I keep uh, kind of run runoff wires 
extra test leads that I actually, the Veris came with test leads, I still have them, but I used uh, some ones I had for my other scanner, but I got extras, case one breaks or gets damaged or lost or stolen or anything like that. Always keep extras, good to have it on hand. Got the uh, Bosch pass-through in here. On the Bosch pass-through, model number F00E900161. So I think that's the Gen 2. It's made by Cardock, all the same. But Bosch makes some pretty cool products, pretty good diagnostic products. And then just the uh, OBD splits, connectors. I got my parasitic uh, drain tester here. Hook that to the uh, multimeter little OBD scan tool you could actually hook to the computer it's not wireless you could hook it to the laptop so you get some faster data and then I got the connector for the pass-through here you got a couple of the computer dongles here for different car manufacturers this one's the Opal pretty much for Toyota and GM and then I got uh, I think Saab or Ford in here and then I got uh, no this one's Ford this one's like the Saab and Volkswagen I believe I got those so I could communicate with those cars with the laptop. I keep a Toyota Keymaker in here for those older uh, 2000, I think six and between 2006 and 12 or something like that to make those keys. And then just some more OBD length thinners if I need to get further away. Things like that. You got the male and female portion with the flat wire so you can close the door on it and stuff. Then I keep a multimeter in here and a charged up tablet. In case I'm looking up data and things like that, and I'm in in the car, I don't got time to go to the computer. I don't feel like going to the computer. Just look it up on the laptop real quick. That's that drawer. And then this last drawer, I keep in here a uh, couple back probes, all the uh, information, destruction list for all the you know amp probe and all that stuff, testers and all that. All the installation CDs in case I change computers or my computer crashes, I could reinstall everything. I got some fast track and smart track older CDs in here by Snap On that I keep still good info why throw it out. More test leads, and then pretty much just various wires and things like that. A lot of the flashlight chargers, phone chargers they work for, they still they're still good, good to keep them on hand. I mean I even got like the older tablet. Actually, this one's for the tablet, but I got the older iPhone chargers in here and all that. Uh, just somewhere to put them. VGA, a long VGA cord. So, test light. Don't know if I said that. But that's that drawer. So that's it for you guys. Quick, uh, you know, in-depth tour of the diagnostic cart that I use. Um, forever changing. You know, a lot of the older tools, like I said, I like to keep guys. It's better to have it than not need it. You know, I mean, it's before you guys go putting comments down in there, I mean, what do you want me to do, throw it out, throw perfectly good stuff out? You know, it took me a long time to collect this stuff. The stuff was expensive, and I'd like to have it if I ever need it. You know, the OBD1 stuff and all that stuff. But it's a great little cart. It's been able to handle what it needs. Um, you know, having this is probably the reason I still have an older service cart, but I am looking into the Snap-on Epic ones to match the, the Beast here toolbox. But let me know what you guys think of the diagnostic cart down in the comments section. Also, let me know if you guys want to see a uh, 2019 toolbox tour updated. Got a lot of new stuff last year and all that stuff. I'm going to probably make it pretty detailed, go through most of my stuff and all that stuff, but kind of testing it out, seeing if you guys, you know, that's something you guys like to see. Um, you know, I still got to clean out some of the drawers, still got to finish up the socket organization and all that stuff. So we'll catch you in the next one. I appreciate all the views and support on the channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you guys want to see uh, another updated toolbox tour for 2019. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Join the fun. Get in on these tool giveaways. We will catch you in the next one. Signing out.